brain has very important function in our lives and one of its functions to delete our memory. I'm going to share with you findings of a scientific article so we would see the role of our mind in cleaning up our memory and how we can choose what can be deleted and what cannot. There's an old saying in neuroscience that says the neurons that fire together, they wire together. So in other words, when two neurons wants to communicate, there would be synaptic connections that built between them to allow neurotransmitters cross from one neuron to the other and the signals pass through, through the impulses that is created by the charges of the receptors at the beginning of each neuron. So if we imagine these two neurons at the edge of them, they each have receptors that they become activated. So it will allow the neurotransmitters like dopamine and serotonin cross over to the next neuron. And that's how the a bridge is connected between these two neurons. And this is what makes a certain thing that we want to do, we become better at it. In other words, this is the old saying of saying practice makes perfect is because let's say the more you do something the more of these synaptic connections these bridges that are built between neurons become stronger and they're more of them are built so we become good better at that what we are practicing to do let's say if you're playing piano a lot or speaking a certain language we're trying to learn it the more we practice it the more these bridges synaptic connections are get stronger and built between the two neurons so the neurotransmitters will pass through the signals and therefore we become better better at it because the connection between the neurons becomes stronger. Now, they have found out that beside practicing so much of what you want to be good at, another important factor in learning things is to be able to unlearn the stuff that we shouldn't follow. Because when we unlearn them, it allows more of a possibility for connection of these bridges being built between the neurons that are going to help us to become better at what we are supposed to be better at and learn. So why? Because there's only so many of these bridges of these synaptic connections can be built in our brain real estate, in the whole land of the brain. So in other words, if you think of your brain as a garden or as a soccer field with soccer plays, in it there's only so many soccer players can be in that field if you want to have more some of them got to go out and in order to see which one goes out which doesn't there are cells called glial cells these glial cells are like gardeners or like referees in soccer game they determine the speed of the game the flow of the game in other words they understand how fast these signals should be passing through or how much nutrients should go to which flower if they're gardener example we choose so in this garden of the brain which you grow synaptic connections between the neurons and the glial cells are the gardeners which help these neurons and synaptic connections to have a certain speed of transmitting all these signals and there's another kind of glial cells called microglial cells which these are the ones who are like the cleaners they take the junk and the weed and the things that are obstacles in front of the garden setting that doesn't let the nutrients and water pass through the flowers and the plants that we wanted to give them nutrition they will take them away these microglial glials are responsible to take away the garbage. Now, how does this work? Well, the things that you use a lot, the things that you think a lot about, the things that you do a lot about are the neurons that become stronger because synaptic connections, the bridges between the neurons are going to become stronger and build more of it. And the ones that you don't think so much, like you learn a certain language, but you're not using it anymore. Or you used to play tennis a lot, but you're not really playing anymore. You used to play piano a lot, but you're not playing it anymore for a long time. Those are the synaptic connections. Those are the bridges between the neurons that the brain recognizes they're not being used. Since it recognizes they're not being used, they're going to mark them. They're going to mark them with a protein called C1Q. And these microglials, which I told you about, they're responsible for cleaning the garbage. They go and find out which ones are marked by these proteins. They attach themselves to these proteins, which those proteins are actually on the synaptic connections between the two neurons, which are the connections, the bridges that allows all those things that you're no longer doing 
used to be uh, passing signals between the two neurons. These microglial cells go connect themselves, attach themselves to those proteins and destroy that bridge, destroy that synaptic connection. Once that synaptic connection, that bridge between the two neurons are destroyed, then there is no easy chance for the signals of your thought process to be engaged with that piano playing or with that subject, which could be your breakup pain, your things that bothers you. The things that you do a lot more becomes stronger. The things that you don't use and don't think of them much, they become destroyed. The bridges between the two neurons become destroyed, which means you will not remember them anymore, not as easily, not easily accessible anymore. So that is where you want to be and that's how you delete the stuff that you don't want. When you are in your memory constantly thinking about your breakup pain and so on and so forth, you're actually encouraging more synaptic connections between the neurons be created, which leads and makes it easy for you to constantly have these memories of bad memories, the breakup memories refreshed in your in you and constantly think about it. However, when you don't think about them so much, like many other things that you don't do anymore, like the piano player speaking language or a game you play and so on, they will be marked, those synaptic connections between the neurons that allows these things to continuously come to your mind, they will be marked with that C1Q protein and the microglial cells go find them and destroy them. And that happens when you sleep, because when you sleep, the brain cells shrink up to 60%. They create space for the microglials to go and look for things that they want to find and destroy. They create space for you to go. See, there's only so many synaptic connections that they can build. Therefore, they need to destroy the ones that are not being used so you can build new ones for what you want to do these days, what you want to be good at, what you want to learn, how you want to spend your thoughts and time on it. So that's why it's very important for you to sleep properly because this deleting process, this destroying of the synaptic connection, these bridges between the neurons of what you don't want to think can only be destroyed when you're sleeping. And when you sleep, these microglial cells go and clean up the stuff. And then that's why when you wake up, you refresh and you have a clear mind. Have you never noticed that when you have a good enough sleep at night, when you wake up, you feel refreshed and you feel really up to doing lots of things energetic and your mind is very clear to function even you can do math or studies better but when you haven't had enough sleep or when you have been trying to learn too many things and you've been clouding your mind with all these projects several projects your mind doesn't have enough clarity that's because so many bridges has been built synaptic connections synaptic connections there's only so much it's so crowded it doesn't really flow everything flows perfectly it doesn't therefore when you sleep and your mind is cleared because the microglial cells have cleaned up all those bridges that you haven't been using there's now more space, more clarity, and new neurons are being built fresh, and you can do your things much better. Similar to saying, if you want to go through a jungle, and it's so many shrubs and things in front of you, and you're trying to clean your way out by a machete, that's when you haven't had enough sleep, and you've had so many projects on your head, so many things you're trying to learn, and so many of the non-used uh, synaptic connections are there, and so, and you didn't sleep enough, so there was no chance for them to be cleared out, so now you're kind of like, you're trying to clean your way out by machete through a jungle. But when you have had a good enough sleep, you wake up and you think, wow, everything's in its own place. There is waterfalls and there's enough space for you to walk. Everything is fresh and clear. That is why it is very important to, to stop thinking so much about the past, about the memories that you don't like. That's why I say don't spend time in your memory. And that is why it's so important to sleep well because this cleanup business takes place when you're sleeping, no other time. 10 or 20 minute nap helps you to be refreshed because these microglial cells have had the chance to go and clean up all the marked synaptic connections and to get rid of all those old bridges and help you to start new and be refreshed to destroy the pathways of thinking about the memories that you don't like and that's how you're able to clean up your memory and delete your memory in a scientific way and believe it or not when you don't use it when you don't keep thinking about these sort of things sooner or later they're marked and glial cells will go and take care of them when you're sleeping and when you wake up, you realize less and less you're thinking about these things because you less and less have been practicing thinking about them.
and seeing these memories. So direct your focus to the things that are happening now in your present moment and get engaged with wonderful projects in your life and don't spend your time in the memory, spend your time with the now and be smart and turn your brain into smart brain. And how it is to be a smart brain is when you resist the temptation of doing things that are not good for you, are not pleasant. And that is how you become smarter. Being smart is not really by IQ. Being smart is really by being able to resist the temptation of doing things that are not beneficial to you. That's really how to be smart. And that is the real way of how you can delete the memories that you are hoping and wanting to delete. Hope that answers some of your questions. Talk to you soon and hope you will have a wonderful day or evening.